Star Wars Celebration 2023 has been an unmitigated disaster for Disney. I guess you could say that it has a bit of a drag to it, pulling it down. Of course, if you get that joke, you understand that a lot of Star Wars is moving into directions that seem a little odd for the franchise. However, one thing that is certainly odd is the viewership. Star Wars Celebration pulled numbers online this week that would be beaten on any regular day by big YouTubers. About 1.5% of all the subscribers to Star Wars cared enough to tune in. That's a bad sign. And so I gathered some of my friends for this uh, Easter and Passover Sunday. I wanted to talk about the deep mythological meanings that George Lucas once used to make Star Wars be more poignant, more powerful than just simply a space opera. We're going to talk about those things and sort of reminisce about what Star Wars once was. Come on and join us. We'll see why this thing stuck around for so long before Disney came in and squashed it. Well, happy Easter, everybody. It's such a joy that you are joining us today. We're going to have a fantastic conversation covering a topic that uh, perhaps we don't get to do each and every day. However, one thing we do do each and every day is explain entertainment and keep you ahead of that culture curve. And we're explaining entertainment big time today. On this Easter Sunday, we are going to be exploring with Force of Light and Jonas J. Campbell the shared themes and the shared uh, the parallels between the crucifixion story and the resurrection and then in Christianity, by the way, and then also uh, what was taken from that and put into perhaps Star Wars, specifically the characters of Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, and the movie Return of the Jedi. I think there's going to be a fascinating uh, study into what makes our stories count, what makes them really uh, stick with us. There's something shared in both the, the story of, of Christ and the cross, as well as this Luke Skywalker figure. They're very different, right? They're not, they're not equal in terms of the impact they have on individuals, and they're not uh, exactly the same in terms of one being the, the, the uniting of myth and history, and one being a Star Wars or a, a, a sci-fi opera. So they're not exactly the same, but I think it's worthwhile to examine this, especially given that we know that George Lucas did, in fact, borrow from different mythologies, religions, uh, spiritual ideas when he was developing Star Wars, and one would assume also as he was closing it out. So, Michelle, welcome back to the channel. Yes, good to be here. And Jonas, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. All the kids are ready for church, and we're just taking a break here before we get going. All right, well, cool deal. All right, well, let's start off talking about uh, some of the parallels we see in terms of uh, the attempt to redeem the sins of another. And so in Christianity, the idea is that uh, Christ being crucified is uh, in part or in totality, depending on your, your thoughts on this, uh, an effect and action in order to redeem those who have sinned uh, Christ being the innocent sacrifice, the divine sacrifice for the atonement of those sins of others, but Christ himself not having sin. And when we look at Star Wars with Return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker is a character who goes in knowing that he is willing to sacrifice himself in order to redeem the sins of his father. So they're not exactly the same, but there are some definite parallels there. And one of the, the genius things that I think about in terms of Return of the Jedi is that, you know, there's not many movies where the hero goes in and refuses to defeat the villain. That, mm -hmm. is, a, that is a radical reversal. And it seems to me that that was specifically pulled from the stories from the Gospels. This yeah. idea that Luke withholds his power. He will not use his power to strike down his father, but rather he will die if necessary. He will, he will withhold all of his abilities and die if necessary in order to find the good that he believes is still there uh, in his dad. Michelle, what do you think about these, these shared themes? Do you think that was taken from Christianity? And I don't mean taken in a bad sense, but, I, but is that why these two stories resonate? 
Absolutely. Um, I, I think George Lucas was very aware of what he was doing. Uh, and I don't know if the director, and it definitely borrows from Christianity and, uh, you know, Old Testament stories, which Christians also believe as well, as long as with uh, the Jewish people. But I know that the director of Return of the Jedi was not happy with the ending where Vader turns to the light. And George Lucas literally said to him, is that not what your religion teaches? Oh, so, wow. I did not know that. Yes. So he definitely had, again, Christianity or, you know, Jewish type in his mind, uh, just thinking of a savior of the world, basically. Uh, but I will say the thing that I see that is so hits, uh, you know, as, as I am a minister and uh, a Christian I, I so see themes of redemption, obviously, but what causes redemption? And that is love. And, I, you know, I would link that back to the most famous scripture in probably all of the Bible, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, because you know, I like it, 17 as well, by the way. What did you say? I said, I like 17 as well, for he sent not his son to condemn the world, but that through yes. him all might be saved. Yes, Yes. And uh, like you said, that, that scene of Luke holding back something I've always really connected to that. That's like one of those life images I see in a movie because it's this idea, like you said, he doesn't kill the villain, but instead with the Jedi strength is actually not giving into hate. And that is very much like the teachings of Jesus and what you find in the New Testament and the Bible. And seems to be totally forgotten by the new Star Wars writers. They, they have no idea the, the depth of the mythology that's being tapped into. One thing I do want to say is for those of you out there who are listening and interested in this, but you're not Christians, we're not trying to proselytize or, or you know, be over uh, heavy handed with this. But I do want to bring uh, to everybody's mind that you know, when, we, when we think about the crucifixion, uh, specifically from uh, the Christian theology side of this, there is that implicit understanding that if Christ is God, if Jesus is God, then he necessarily has to hold back everything, right? All the power that, that is granted to being God, and that is omnipotence, uh, in order to allow himself to be uh, crucified in the way that he is and, and never use any power, right? We, we read about all of these miracles all through the Gospels, but then those miracles are withheld uh, during the time on the cross. Jonas, what do you think about uh, the parallels between Star Wars and uh, the crucifixion? What do you see here? Well, uh, I'll add to what you just said in that uh, in the biblical story, uh, Jesus never uses his uh, miraculous abilities to serve himself. He uses it to serve others in all instances. There aren't any self-serving uh, miracles. Uh, That's an excellent before. point. Well, he's here. Um, the fascinating thing to me, of course, um, there are places where the parallels uh, break down. Like you said, we're not we're not trying Listen, to. Say I, I'm interested a, in those as well, by the way. Right. Uh, obviously, Luke Skywalker's father is Darth Vader. Uh, spoiler alert for anyone out there who hasn't seen uh, Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> uh, but if you look at Anakin Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker is a person who tried to do good and then was tempted in a way that served himself because he was scared and he didn't trust anyone else to help. He took into his own hands his ability to, what's the best way to put this? He decided to enact vengeance on the world because he wanted to protect himself and the people he loved. So he decided to do a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. Now we kind of connect him turning evil to a few scenes before he uh, murders a uh, Jedi temple full of younglings. Uh, so it kind of gets glossed over there. But you have a very fleshly idea here, working evil and serving yourself and therefore justifying your own sins. Uh, and then from that point on, there's nothing that can redeem him until his son comes along here. Um, in this case, our, our Christ figure. And he, he sees him. And he tries to turn him, as many sinners in the Bible try to do, to non-sinners, although we're all sinners if you read the book. Um, but he ultimately fails because he can't corrupt this one 
single incorruptible uh, savior. Uh, well, high that's, a good, that's a good point. He's not able to draw out the sin of, of Luke Skywalker. He's not able to draw him to drop that, uh, that, that purity, although it exists, the, the potential exists, right? Luke Skywalker can turn to the dark side. And, and that's a key point here, too, is that in both Christianity and in Star Wars, there's an implicit understanding, and it is, it, it's strong. And, and maybe this is why they want to change Star Wars so badly. But there's an mm -hmm. implicit understanding of free will and your ability to, to choose right and wrong, the light from the dark. And maybe that's why they hate Luke Skywalker. I mean, some of these people really hate that character and they really wanted to diminish him in the sequel trilogy. Perhaps it's because of, of that idea that he chose freely to do good and was uh, impossible to sway by his father. And therefore they needed to slime that character uh, in the sequel trilogy in order to make him feel more relatable to the people who don't like that idea, that idea of choosing right, even when it's difficult. Am I, yes. am I anywhere close, Michelle? Well, I think so because, you know, I never actually thought of it this way. I just kind of seen more of the themes, but it's like Luke really is like the messianic care figure in this story. And Anakin's story and Vader's story is like the story of humanity like chosen, like God's creation. Uh, they were good, as scripture says, and then fall as Anakin falls. And then the rest of the story is ultimately leading to that redemption, which really only comes about through Luke, through Luke's love. So Luke is the messianic character and Anakin's life parallels with the story of humanity. And of course, it's not lost on me that Luke shares his name with one of the gospels in the New Testament that tells about Jesus. That's not lost on me at all. Jonas, I'm, I'm also thinking about the symbolisms that are present in both of these stories. Mm -hmm. I'm not equating the two, but in, in the crucifixion, of course, uh, this is something that has been uh, intriguing to humanity for 2,000 years. We've been puzzling this thing out. It's deeply impactful psychologically, even to people who uh, discredit it totally. There's something, there's something impressive here, and I'm not sure that you could... It would take some type of insane genius to come up with the symbolism behind Christ on the cross, because in that image, you have uh, innocence with arms held wide open. Um, you have a crown of pain and suffering upon the head of the divine, uh, the divine attempting to save humanity and a humanity that's not interested in being saved. Then I look at the symbolisms of, of the Star Wars character, Luke Skywalker in the throne room, and I, I note that he puts his sword away. You know, that's part of that tradition in storytelling of sheathing the sword, right? That's uh, uh, telling that peace will be had one way or the other and, and not giving in to temptation. I also see that the Emperor, when, when uh, Darth Vader cannot stand any longer, the reason is because the Emperor has taken to deep malevolence, uh, torturing Luke Skywalker. And therefore, that is what uh, causes Darth Vader to finally find the drop of empathy that remains inside of him. He can no longer withstand seeing malevolence in his presence. What do you make of all of that, Jonas? What are the symbolisms that you see in these two stories that are so striking? Clearly something in both of these, although one more than other, clearly they are both deeply profound to people or else we wouldn't see them as something that are, that's held on to by so many. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's first of all talk about the emperor uh, who just the existence of an empire uh, implies the existence of an emperor. And then he kind of shows up in empire strikes back, but he's personified in return of the Jedi. And what this does from a storytelling standpoint is allows Darth Vader, the option of being saved instead of being the final villain. You have this guy who's very much the devil. If we're using this analogy, uh, which sure. I, he's ultimate I, I, evil, right? Right. He's the one who is trying to turn Luke Skywalker. If we want to think about the three temptations uh, in the 40 days in the wilderness, that that he's the one who wants to turn Luke, uh, but and he's trying to use uh, Darth Vader to do this, Anakin Skywalker to do this. Uh, the time leading up to the crucifixion, we have Jesus, just for anybody who's not familiar with the details going up to the cross, uh, Jesus on the Mount of Olives, 
and he has his friends there, but he's still in solitude because his friends can't stay awake. Um, we have Luke abandoning his friends um, to go off on this mission on his own. He's Good supposed point. to be there with them, and then he goes off on his own. We the have isolated the isolated hero. Yeah. Yes. We have the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed to God that uh, please don't let this have to happen this way, but if it is your will, let your will be done. Um, now, when that that that's, sword... that's the voluntary that's the voluntary acceptance of suffering for the greater good. Of course, right. taken to its and and that's one of the things about this too is that in the in the Star Wars story, these things are not taken to their uh, archetypal edges, right? Not to the, the absolute concluding points, but in the story of Jesus, you have both the myth and the history merging together in absolute, like you can't go any farther than what you, than what's, what it's taken in any of these areas. That, is that fair? Yes. Yes. I, I would also I, add. I want to say Jonas on that. I think like the moment I would equip, like uh, say is kind of symbolic of the garden of Gethsemane is when he speaks with uh, Yoda and Obi-Wan after Yoda passes away. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause that's like his, when he realizes what he has to do, because by the time he sees Leia, he's already decided like mm -hmm. he's going, she's not going to stop him. It's already made up mind. So that, I think that's a good comparison even, but you can continue. No, no, no to, just to add also to the sheathing of the sword, obviously Peter, uh, mm -hmm. the zealous guy that he is, he's not the zealot, but he is the <laughs> zealous guy. Um, he used the sword against the, uh, the captors and Jesus told him, put, Put your sword away. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. And of course, these warrior monks are kind of a excellent antithesis that's great in storytelling. Um, just to 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 go to this idea that he let he gave up his power, he handed his lightsaber over to Darth Vader down on Endor and went to go have this real battle uh here up uh up in the skies. I'm not I'm not trying to make that analogy, but that actually works now that I think about it. Uh, and, the, and the ultimate temptation is, does he take that power that is offered to him, earthly temporary power, even though it's obviously in the skies here, uh, or does he give it away so that he can redeem uh, his father? Right. In this and, and case, he's, the father he's not, is... It's not assured either in the story the of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. so that, that is one interesting difference, is that Luke doesn't know if the plan will work. Mm -hmm. uh, according to Christian theology, Christ does know that it will work. So, right, because he's an eternal think? being. In that, that's where it kind of breaks down because that's where Darth Vader picks up the rest of the messianic figure because he does, he knows when, that's why he keeps looking, you know, between Vader, I mean, between uh, the Emperor and Luke. He knows what he has to do, but in order to do it, he's going to die. So, you know, ultimately he does, he's the one who gives the ultimate sacrifice to oh, save not just point. Luke, but the whole galaxy. That's a great point. That's an excellent point. And it's, it's the witnessing of malevolence against his own child that finally causes him to take action and do the right thing. That's, a, that's a, an amazing point. Michelle, what do you think about this idea of malevolence and it being the thing that finally spurs people to action? That we, you know, there, there's a lot of, of negativity that we'll accept, right? But si witnessing our own child, perhaps, or our only family member being mistreated uh, with, with glee or with joy, you know, someone taking negative action against them on purpose to cause them suffering, that will spur us into action. Do you, you think that's an, an important point in the story? D I, I do. I like to lean more towards that, 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 because we see Anakin wasn't a bad guy. I mean, you know, he ends up being a bad guy, but there was good in Anakin and, uh, you see, I like to think it really is more just like the the love that had laid dormant, like it, it's there at that final moment. So yeah, it is what's being done to him, but it's that overwhelming love to me that is what makes him just go for it. Uh, with but but it, but you are right. It is because I mean, Father, please. I mean, that's just like pulling on anyone's heartstrings. That scene, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. So so it's both. It's both. It's that seeing someone you love in pain. So you're totally right. I think that's totally right. Uh, seeing someone you love in pain and then it moves you to action. Yes. Yes. Jonas, you had a, a thought. 
Oh, uh, n no, just that, uh, y you know, on this idea that the, the Emperor Palpatine is uh, the devil, the <laughs> idea that, that he deceived him into, mm -hmm. uh, into sin, that he said, well, you can have this power if you follow me. But in the end, of course, sin is a lie and uh, doesn't really serve you in the way that it's supposed to serve. Now, oh, one of the yeah, things... that whole, the whole opera scene is just like straight up like you could compare like, again, the temptation of Christ. Like it, it really is just promising the world, but never going to actually, you see what you get, guys. You get you get no legs and arms. <laughs> right, right. Well, there you go. <laughs> and burned in a lava pit. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So two days ago, I had a conversation with John Trent of Bounding Into Comics, and we were discussing sort of this uh, battle that's taking on uh, inside our society, right? In, inside the, the philosophies of, of the Western world. And I think that's coming to, uh, if it's not coming to a head, it's at least strengthening now with both sides seeming to really entrench. And in my opinion, that the two sides really come down to uh, logos and anti-logos. What I mean by that is that uh, the logos is articulated truth in the, in the Bible that is uh, said to be Christ, that Christ is logic incarnate, right? That's where the word mm -hmm. logic comes from, is from logos, the ultimate truth incarnate. Um, and, you know, people don't have to necessarily believe that. They can believe that there is objective truth somewhere else. Perhaps it's demonstrated in uh, empiricism or what have you. But I think that there's a whole group of people out there who they despise the idea of truth whatsoever, that they just think that might is right. What do you both think that these two stories have to say about that concept of might is right? It seems to me that both Star Wars with the Luke Skywalker uh, situation and with uh, Christ and the crucifixion, that in both, this, both of these, it's, it's a declaration against might being right. I'll let Jonas answer that one first. <laughs> oh, can I? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, l l let's talk about where Star Wars fails because it has to, because it's a movie that has to make money. Uh, the whole thing is about, you know, laser swords and space battles, but it has these solid heroes here. And uh, he has to put down his lightsaber, but after they have like a 30 minute lightsaber fight in order to do it. Um, th these are the places where movies always uh, fail to tell the, the Christ story. There's only one movie I can think of off the top of my head that actually does <laughs> the sacrifice of Christ well, and that's, of course, Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, mm. For anyone who is a Christian who watches that movie, that is that is a hard scene to watch, the shaming mm -hmm. and the shaving of Aslan uh, when he could devour any of these horrible creatures that are mocking him but he wants to save edmund uh for the sake of everyone uh and the white queen thinks she wins but uh hold up there right um, and the women go weep <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, that y y you know we, we could probably do a, an entire other video just on on c.s lewis and those few chapters right there uh not to deviate too far or take over the video here but um, the the Bible story and the the ultimate thing that Star Wars doesn't get is that Luke does not become the ultimate power. Luke does not become God, mm -hmm. and especially the way Disney wrote it, Luke does not become God. <laughs> right. uh, Luke becomes a, a sad hermit eventually. <laughs> right. Jesus comes back to uh, assure them all: No, I do have ultimate power, and I'm here to show everyone the whole purpose of him being here was to save all of you and, and then uh, ascends into the sky and the higher he gets. And then some angels come and say, Oh, look over here. And then they all have to go out. And uh, if it were star Wars, they would all be Jedi at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well played. All right. Well, you know, it's a, it's going to be a great day today. I'm so happy that it's Easter and a time for celebration. And I think that everybody out there, even if you're not Christian or uh, that you maybe you don't even respect religion at all, I think you can still have a wonderful day today. And uh, let me hand it over to Michelle for final thoughts, and then I'll give Jonas final thoughts as well. Michelle, what do you think uh, as we wrap up today on this Easter Sunday? I think that I wish we had more stories like this today. Um, that That's a great point that we had more stories that with people who truly understand Lucas 
he was very intentional. Like he understood people. He understood anthropology. He understood the, the hero's journey and did look to what connects humans. Oh, religion, like uh, faith is what, uh, I mean, gosh, a, a quote I often use from, it just so parallels to a scripture is Obi-Wan, your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Uh, mm -hmm. We need more stories like that, that just speak, we'll say eternal truths, whether you are a Christian, not a Christian, whatever you are. That uh, truth word, though, they, they don't like that truth word. They don't. But stories like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Narnia. Now, I know two of the ones definitely have a Christian bent. But even like we recently watched the Karate Kid trilogy. That has eternal truths in it that inspire, that speak to people and speak to our humanity. And that's all I would say. I just wish that we could get more people who would write stories that lift people up, give hope, are inspiring, and 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 do connect to the things like faith that people really that connects humans. That's very personal for people. I, I just think those are beautiful type stories that are eternal, that kind of eternal in a way. Like they last forever because they have those eternal truths in them. Um, and I just think our society is in desperate need of those. And I just hope more creators begin to write things like that. Absolutely. Jonas, final no, thoughts? That's, no, that's perfect. I, I could barely say it any better than that. Um, I think about the last uh, great franchise to come up, which is probably Harry Potter. And it also goes to that idea of someone who was sent to a place they don't belong uh, and has to sacrifice themselves. And uh, the people who protect him are people who have good Judeo-Christian ethics, whether or not J.K. Rowling intended it that way. But that's a story that connected with so many people that, I mean, th those books came out in, what, 97? Here we are, you know, 25, uh, 26 years later. Uh, and in the whenever they make the next ones, I'm sure they'll do great if they stick to that. They did deviate, which also makes the point here. <laughs> yes, I would say that these types of stories are deeply meaningful. Yes. And well, that's all I have to, to say uh, about that. Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> well, as we come to a wrap, folks, I do want to say one thing on this Easter Sunday. You may look out at some point today if the weather is nice and see little children searching for Easter eggs and putting those Easter eggs in their baskets. As you do, consider that people are even more beautiful than little Easter eggs and so much more important. If you find anyone out there in your life that needs to be put in your basket of friendship, consider doing that very kind act and helping them feel less lonely. And if you're out there and you feel like one of those little lost Easter eggs that nobody found yet and you feel lonely, I recommend that you just wait and find people who care deeply about you. I think that when that happens, it's a very beautiful thing. So I wish all the love and happiness and joy and beauty in all of your lives. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms. When you click it, we're talking about that notification bell. The Pro Show is 5 to 7 Thursdays, Eastern Time. Make sure you're there for all that fun. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.